In this video, I want to walk through and show you how to find the exact value for the sine of 75 degrees, and we're going to do it two different ways. The first way we're going to do it is going to be to use the sum identity for sine, and then we'll use the half angle identity for sine. So two different ways. I'll show you that they come out to be the same. We'll put it in a calculator and verify that uh, what we've done is okay. So the sine of a plus b. Well, we need two angles uh, that we know the values of for both sine and cosine that add up to 75. Well, I know that, uh, let's see, 30 degrees plus 45 degrees, both of those are nice angles. We know the sine and cosine of both 30 and 45 degrees, and they also add up to 75 degrees. So using the sum identity here for sine, let's go ahead and rewrite this and expand it out as the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees plus the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 30 degrees, okay? So let's go ahead and get values for all of these. The sine of 30 is going to be 1 half. The cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. And we're going to add to that, let's see, the sine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2, times the cosine of 30, which is the square root of 3 over 2. So adding these, we'll multiply first, so the square root of 2 over 4, and then we'll add them, square root of 6 over 4. And we can put this over a single common denominator. Let's go ahead and put the larger radical first. So we'll say the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4, and this will be the exact value for the sine of 75 degrees. So let me push it over to the side a little bit. I'll grab the calculator, and let's go ahead and just show that this uh, works out. We'll do it by finding the inverse of sine, and we'll go ahead and put that ratio in. So we have the numerator, which is the square root of 6, plus the square root of 2, and I'll close up that numerator. I'll divide it by 4, close up that inverse sine, and equals, and there we have 75 degrees. Okay, fabulous. Okay, so now let's do it a second way, and let's go ahead and look at this half angle identity. So the sine of theta over 2 equals this formula right here. So in this case, our theta needs to be twice 75, so 150 degrees. So I'm going to say the sine of 150 degrees divided by 2 will equal the square root of 1 minus the cosine of 150 degrees, and all that is going to be divided by 2. Okay, so hopefully we get the same thing. Well, we know that the cosine of 150 degrees is going to be a negative radical 3 over 2, and all that's over 2, and of course all that's under a square root. So let's go ahead and kind of polish this up a little bit. So I have minus a negative, so I can a little swoosh swoosh, make it an addition problem. And then let's get common denominators for this numerator. So I'm going to multiply the 1 by 2 over 2. So what I'll have is 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2. All of that is over that 2, and of course all of that is inside that square root. Well, what I can do for this 2 in the denominator, it's really 2 over 1, so I can divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'll bring this up, play a little fraction acrobat, bring him up, and he flips over. So when I multiply across, I'll have 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 4, okay, and that's going to be underneath that radical. Well, it looks like this square root expression is very different from this expression. So I wonder how maybe we can make this look like the other one so we don't have the radical inside of a radical. So what I'm going to do is start by multiplying inside this radical by 2 over 2. Okay, So I'll end up with 4 plus 2 radical 3 all over 8. And so I'm going to take this numerator, which is 4 plus 2 times uh, the square root of 3, and I'm going to break it up, and I'm going to say, instead of 4, I'm going to say 3 plus 1, so 3 plus 1. And instead of having two square roots of 3, let's divide them up and say the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3. And all of that's over 8, and all of it's underneath a radical. All right, well, why would I do that? Well, because I can factor this expression by using grouping, put it in the two groups, and I can actually create a perfect square that, when under the radical, will cancel. Okay, so now if I 
let's go write it down here. So 3 plus the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 plus 1. So if I factor the greatest common factor here, which let's just say it's the square root of 3, I'll end up with the square root of 3 plus 1. Greatest common factor here, let's say 1, square root of 3 plus 1. These leftovers are the same, so radical 3 plus 1. And then my greatest common factors were also the same. Look at that. So what I'm left with then is the square root of 3 plus 1 squared. Okay, well let's put that back up here. So I have the square root of 3 plus 1 squared all over 8, and all of that's under that radical. So I'll need to divide this up into two pieces first. There we go, and all that's under the square root of 8. Okay, so for the numerator, the square and the square root cancel out, which that's really good. So I'm left with now the square root of 3 plus 1 all over the square root of 8, which we could reduce that to 2 radical 2. And a final step of rationalizing this denominator gives us the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. All right, and now this is the same thing as what we had previously. So we're able to use the sum uh, identity for sine or also the half angle identity for sine. But either way we go about it, we see that the sine of 75 will be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 all over 4. And consequently, this is also the cosine of 15 degrees um, because the 15 and the 75 are complementary angles.